Hello, uh, Christmas week. No. Uh, hey. Uh, fuck's sake. Uh -uh. Um, I should play I, a tune. I don't know why I, I went. Have my phone on me. <laughs> um, how's it going? Not so bad. <laughs> Not so bad. Christmas, Good. Christmas gigs and all that. I, I've got. I'm going to take this off. I just left. Just left my coat on. Is this, this, is, this is my. This is my. Uh, Luther coat. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I, I spotted it. I, uh, that wee guy gave me a compliment about this in the in Sainsbury's last night. Somebody gave you a compliment on your coat. Yeah, we got in Sainsbury's. I was. I'll tell you why I was in Sainsbury's in a minute. But uh, he said, uh, "I really like your coat. Where did you get it?" It's nice when you get that wee kind of boost. It's never happened to me. No, I'm not surprised. <laughs> I, I wore this jumper because yeah, I was like, this one looks as close to Christmas yeah. as I actually have. But it's, it's not a Christmas jumper. Unless you're hanging about with shepherds. I don't <laughs> imagine they would ever compliment your clothes. <laughs> shepherds. Um, this is my favourite Christmas jumper because it's a wee, it's a Christmas cardigan. And it's, okay. got, wee bell, it's got bells. Oh, at, I at, hear you coming like a cat. At, at the nipples. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stop you hunting birds again. <laughs> <laughs> Come to the back door. Are you aware of this thing um, with like cardigans and waistcoats? Waistcoats particularly where you don't do the bottom button. Y the Henry yeah. VIII thing. What What the fuck? What? Do you not know this? What? So it's the same with jackets as well. I, I, like, I, I know that. do the bottom button. I've heard. You told me this. Aye. You told me this at, at fucking Daniel's wedding. So it did, yeah. You yeah. did, and I caused the whole scene about it. Yeah, what, yeah. what, what, what is it? It's, it, it, it I, think it's, I, th I think it's to do with Henry VIII, because he was a fat guy, and he would never do, he could never do the bottom button. So okay. now tradition is you just don't do it. And it looks better. But generally, if you look at everyone, like Bond never does the bottom button. Bond. And that's you, how you, I take. You base, you base everything on <laughs> I treat every Does Bond do this? I base everything how I dress, how I treat women. <laughs> <laughs> what would Bond do in this situation? Um as it's our Christmas week as well, we're doing we're doing a double episode today. Yeah, because we're away, yeah. We're away uh, with family. So we're gonna do this and you've got a Christmas party tonight as well. I do have a Christmas party. Yeah. yeah. So Woo! So it's ten o'clock in the morning just now. And we're gonna start drinking. Can I can I just also add something? There's only, a can oh, just to no. keep things going. Right, so 10 a.m. We're gonna to have to start drinking, right? Mm. But also, I'll have to between after recording this and thing, I'll have to edit the videos and stuff. Yeah. But when I edit, I always like smoke a joint. So I'm gonna be right. Like, well, Ryan, for fuck's sake, I'm gonna be illegal. You're what? gonna get shut down. <laughs> the, <laughs> fucking, <laughs> the, the, the narcs are already on us. Um, I, but I've, you've got yeah, I've got. Do you know what I've got to do after this? Yeah, right. I've got to. For anyone that doesn't know, I also host a radio show on Radio Scotland called The Good, The Bad, and The Unexpected. Right. We are recording two episodes for the next series to get ahead of things. Yeah, yeah. So after this, I've got to go and do a basic panel show <laughs> with Richie from Five. <laughs> And Glenn Matlock from the Sex Pistols. <laughs> so, uh, your editing sounds fucking class. Yeah, in fairness, yeah, I can just go and sit there. But yeah. mind you, what a, what a combo. When and you they're, to, to be fair, they're, sexless, they're, sexless. Not, they're not in the same. They're not in the same episode, which would have been amazing. Oh, I thought that you were going to think, but still, that's 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 still wild. It is pretty good. My every year because we we started. We used to just get, it just used to just be mostly comics we would get that were kind of based in Scotland and some from London. But then when the pandemic happened, because everyone was doing stuff on Zoom, we realised, fuck, we can pretty much get yeah. the most people. So some of the guests we get are fucking wild. And every year, uh, the producers, uh, Rich, asks me, who do you fancy get on? So we tried to get Tim uh, Burgess from the Charlatans. Yeah. And to be fair to him, he got back to us. Yeah, yeah. And said, like, it's not really my thing, but... And the rich had said Mark's a huge Charlottes fan, and he'd said, eh, "Tell Mark all the best, and if he ever wants to come to a Charlottes gig, let me know." So I was like, "Fuck, this is even better than him being on." Yeah. Um, every year they ask me who I want on. My ideal, who I've tried, to, who I've, I've suggested for this series, the ideal one would be Suggs from Madness. Yeah. Ali McCoist. Yes. And Jet from the Gladiators. <laughs> Jet. So that's, the, that's the episode I wanted to do. Dirty Den. <laughs> Dirty Den? He's still alive. Is he? I don't know. I, I don't think... know. I only I only knew him because I used to love Fort, Fort Bayard. 
Oh God, yeah. Do you remember Fort Bayard? Well, in the Messenger in it as well. Uh, do we, oh yeah, and the, yeah, yeah they, they had a little midget run around, open the doors. Yeah, for yeah, it doesn't. Eh, uh, Leslie Grantham. That's it. Yeah, he yeah. Got, do you, you remember he got? Was it? Did he get done wanking his car, or did he say? They not send a video where he was like. He's basically like sucking his finger or something and having a whack or something. There's definitely something. Off like... his car? No, no, no. Seagulling? I, I think he got... Is that what seagulling is? Seagulling is when you, you're out dogging and you blow your load on the car. So it's like car. It's like is a that seagull, not just dogging? Like a you, you seagull shot on the car. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. But I thought... I only learned that last night. John Pearson told me. <laughs> only learned like last night, mate. That's some background. Because did it. Because <laughs> <laughs> it happened, all right. Um... No, because do- is dogging where you have sex in a car for strangers to watch? I think you can have. I thought. Well, I think you can have sex with the strangers as well. Right. And and don't bring your baby. <laughs> Back of a hot car. <laughs> God, that would be awful. <laughs> if you went to a dog inside. <laughs> <laughs> and you were just ripping it to a couple shacking in the front. And then you just looked and their whole family was in the back. <laughs> on on Game Boys just. Oh, God. <laughs> Radio turned up. Oh, the grimmest <laughs> looking image possible. Merry, oh. Merry Christmas to all the absolute cuts fans. Oh, out there. Jesus Christ. Um, so, I also, the reason I was in Sainsbury's was I was trying to find eggnog. Oh. So, I don't know if you've ever had eggnog. I think I had it. Years ago, I don't remember, but I think I had it for like the the fax videos, the tri videos. Oh yeah, yeah. Back in the day, I've always liked the look of it. <sighs> I can't I remember it, it. Whenever I see it in American Christmas films, always because they've always got a big bowl of it, and it's got like rum and shit in it. And... I tell you what, it, what froze me off is the fact that it comes in like a carton. Yeah, you know, and you're like, how long? And it doesn't look like it's kept in the fridge. No, it's one of those ones where like <laughs> it's just on a yeah on a dry shelf. Well, a I cool can... dry place, just a carton of fucking the like, only place. Like, how long does that keep? Because I've I've seen it like because because a lot of American folk had because I'd put yeah. it up on the internet saying where can I get eggnog, and they'd said oh you go into any grocery store and you'll find it, and I was like but remember I'm in Britain, and the only place I could find it was <laughs> then then why are you asking me is that what they said <laughs> basically yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, the only place they said they said there was one sh- there was one little in Glasgow that apparently had it. But there was none when I went in. Uh, and yeah. I checked in Sainsbury's. I could get it off Amazon, but it wasn't going to arrive in time. And again, if Amazon are delivering it, Aye, this is supposed it. to be a, 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 I'm assuming a cold drink. Aye. But also it's got cream in it. Been so... stuck in the Suez Canal for six years. Aye. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I bet it wouldn't come, come out, in time. Keep out bloppy. So instead of that, I've got us. The, yeah. The, the, de- <laughs> the devil's milk. The devil's milk. <laughs> they are all Salted s- caramel and Sat- all. Satan's. Oh. Satan's spunk here. la di da So, um... Oh, God. Yeah, salted caramel as I well. I fucking so. love Baileys. I, I absolutely... It's great for, like, having around... Uh, you know, instead of an alternative sometimes to whiskey, if you're at a music festival and have a little flask of oh, Baileys... Aye. Oh, sweet Jesus. You're just like... You know when you have too much, you only keep drinking, but you're like, this is too rough. You're in the, the in-between part where you're like, oh, beer's too rough, whiskey, just give me an hour. Yeah, 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 Sipping yeah, yeah, on yeah. a Baileys going... This is good for my stomach. It's probably actually way worse for your stomach. Oh, it'd be terrible for your stomach. Uh, yeah. Do you remember the time, the first time I met John Hastings? Um, mm-hmm. He's like, why do you keep drinking Baileys? And uh-huh. I had like three Baileys in this thing. And I go, you want to see a man take Baileys? And then I drank like 15. <laughs> Shots of it? Like, yeah, like in the thing, uh, in, in Abattoir. And <laughs> I never knew, I didn't know him. And just he, during the fringe? Yeah. Uh, uh, and he was just like, like by the time I was on ten, I went like this. I kept going like another Billy, and he just kind of went, "I'm not part of this bit. <laughs> I don't care." And uh, I drank so much, I ran around the corner and puked everywhere because it was Billy's. Like I drank like a, a two bottles of Billy's, and then Jesus Christ. and he was just like, "What was that about?" And I go, you know. so, um, "Sometimes you just gotta commit." Do you remember the uh, footballer, the Italian footballer Lorenzo Amoruso? I do. Yeah. Rangers, didn't he? Played for Rangers. Um, he was addicted to Baileys. He went to rehab. For, for addi- Baileys? For addiction to Baileys. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> I, if I, I would turn them around at the at the rehab centre. Uh, I'd be like, come, to, come he, back when you got a real problem. I mean, he would like tan pints of Baileys. <laughs> pints of it. That's fucking horrific. I mean, that's a ridiculous yeah, thing. That's the fun. only other one I've ever heard. Remember the, remember the band Keen? I fucking hate it. Right, I, I didn't mind Keen. Keen are, Keen right. are just boring. Um, remember the big moon-faced cunt that was like their 
uh, lead singer. I better fucking stop speaking about people last week because there's a good chance he'll be coming on the radio show at yeah, some aye. point. But, um... So, Moonface. <laughs> <laughs> The good, the bad, and the moon face. <laughs> um, uh, he had an addiction to port. Okay, it's, it's. I mean, that's a rich addiction. That like that's proper. Well, aye, that's um, gout. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I got. I'm addicted to sherry. Yeah, oh, yes. that's Henry the Eighth kind of shit. That mm. like. Yeah, he but he unbuttons his. <laughs> <laughs> he unbuttons the bottom of his pajamas. <laughs> uh, how are the Christmas gigs? Oh, yeah, well, I was in Nottingham this weekend. They were wild, but they they just kept on the side of good. But, like, anything else would have just very quickly turned very bad very yeah. quick. Yeah, yeah. Tell uh, tell the audience the woman filming you, because I think it's very, very, very <sighs> funny. Jesus Christ. <laughs> there was a woman in the middle of it, and she was interrupting everyone. She was one of the worst of them, right? And she's only a few rows back. And she's sitting there, and she, er, she's with her boyfriend, and she goes, uh, "She, I can hear her muttering, going like, laughing at some of the jokes a lot." Mm. And then I'm um, thirty seconds later, going, "This guy is terrible." <laughs> and then anytime I did an abortion, I, I said something. I go, "My friend's black," and she goes, "Oh, Grace, you're racist." And I was like, "I was like, that's nowhere near the punchline. Not even I just said the word black, yeah. right?" <laughs> oh, great, he's a racist too. And then she takes out her phone, right? She wants, obviously wants to be, she's so hammered, but she thinks she's going to be a part of a viral video. And you can tell because she's like, and starts sitting up a bit. And her uh -huh. boyfriend's sitting beside her like, oh, fuck's sake. So she, I was like, are you filming me? And she goes, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, it's mad that no, like, bouncers running or jumping in here. They just go, hey, can you stop doing that? Mm -hmm. And then she goes, uh, <laughs> when does the comedy start? <laughs> and I was like, when you tried fitting in that dress. <laughs> She fucking she lost it. They broke up mid show. <laughs> yeah. She ran out singing. He sat there embarrassed, but also didn't follow her. That's and then a five minutes right. later went on. Five minutes and more into the set came out and she break bust back into the room and ran over and like grabbed the coat that she obviously had oh, forgotten and went. No. And, oh, and marked back out. Oh. I love when you hear can overhear uh audience <laughs> members say shit. When it goes just goes quiet and somebody said, I had it uh, about two months ago. Where um, it was an old couple. It was just it was all, I was trying all new material and stuff yeah. as well, and um, they they just they were just muttering all the way through, and they, they clearly couldn't stand me. And <laughs> uh, there was at one point where it went it went quiet because the rest of us were sort of enjoying it, and I think I said something like, "Here's how I think we should solve the climate crisis," and I just heard the woman go. Oh, here we fucking go. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Oh, fuck me. I, uh, knew, this would I knew this would come up. Uh, it's so funny, man. Yeah, um, I can hear that sometimes when I do, uh, when I mention the trans bit. Oh, just yeah. Say, just say the word. You hear a few people go, oh, fucking trannies. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> Jesus. I never heard the joke. I never heard the joke. I was with Tom Houghton. How was he? So. He was good. He did really well. I was I was worried for him in a, Gla a Glasgow Christmas. Christmas gig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but no, nah, I wasn't really worried. I thought I thought I knew he'd do it. He was more worried than. Anyone yeah, else, yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's because you can get into his head. Uh, they were actually they were actually really really nice at the glee. When you're doing like, oh, he's like, oh, I'm doing Belfast, and I'm like, woof. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Woof. <laughs> Change your everything. <laughs> Uh, you'd be back with a, you'd be back sent to your dad in a wee fucking a wee box a wee box with a Union Jack <laughs> pissed on folded up on top of it oh uh, um, I've bought a I've bought two tuxedos this week why um, what the movie and another one <laughs> Jackie Chan <laughs> Jackie Chan <laughs> um, the uh, no I, I, I so I always get dressed up and me and my family always really get dressed up on Christmas day and I'd seen, uh, so my wee boy had got a, my wife had found like an H&M or something, like a kid's white tuxedo. And he wore it to his Christmas dance. He looks looked, like the wee dude from looked, Fantasy Island. Yeah, he looked fucking <laughs> class, man. And I was getting him to do Bond lines and shit like this. And then uh, I was like, oh, I'm going to get one of them as well. So then I went online and I got, I got one. And then I found another one that was burgundy red. <sighs> so I, was, I was I filmed a TV show yesterday. And in bur a, in a burgundy that, red, and a burgundy red tuxedo, because it was it was breaking the news, but it was their year review. We try a telly, <laughs> yeah. But like I thought, oh well, that'd be good. Yeah, yeah, everyone will dress up. No, just me. 
That's better though. Sometimes everyone else. I mean, everyone else made a bit of an effort. But yeah. Did they? Did they look at you? And go. Oh, all right. Oh, it was noticeable that I can't. I can't come out here to blow us out of the water. Yeah. I don't even own good clothes. No, I can't think of anything you own. I'd wear. Yeah, I, I'm not even offended by that. I just no. do not give a shit. Some of your football tops are all right. <sighs> you see, this is people. People get upset. That they're like, why are you wearing football tops? <laughs> I've got some old, funky football tops. That's it. Aye. I like, do you know what pisses me? Right, before we start the film, right? <laughs> I don't like that. that it's like a you. proper... <laughs> <laughs> you see you. I'm all right. Yeah, it's all right. I just touched, I, I just the, like touched the Bailey shit. Here's the fucking problem. <laughs> with, um, <laughs> the, um, you know how we, we it annoys us quite a lot when people get really wanky and like self-righteous about n- and like almost like making it like not liking football as a personality oh it's just a fucking kicking an airball aye uh, you know the, 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 re- re- reduce everything to fucking oh it's it, when when they do that thing whenever oh titanic just to put people dying yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> whenever they do that thing whenever the world cup's on and the euros are on and they'll always do that thing going oh what's happening in the kicky ball today like fuck well, right okay fine. we'll check everything aye, it's on yeah, the news right, right, cool you don't like it personally i feel sad for you because it's awesome yeah. and the emotion that some people are feeling over this is incredible so yeah. fucking get over yourself i also hate people that go a uh, grown men people that say like anyone over the age of like eight wearing a football top is ludicrous no, yeah, I don't see yeah. any problem with an adult wearing a football. If you're go- I'm not saying you go to a fucking wedding wearing one or an, a job interview. But if you're going to the game, unless it's a job interview at the football club. No, that's needy. That's keen, isn't it? Yeah, that's what I do. Keen number eight. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of keen references. Roy Keen. Very much keen. Keen the band. <laughs> <laughs> Moonface, <laughs> Moonface himself. Um, see, I, I hate people. I think if even if you're hanging out at the house, you can wear. What would you see if you were a coach or a, a ma- if you're a manager? What a uh, closing type manager would you be? Well, first would you be of all, a tracky or a suit or a a pep. Oh, I mean, I feel like you know. See, I I, I can't do the, the turtleneck now. No, I can't. Pep's done it. That's true. You know. Yeah, I'd go toe to toe for him. Trophy wise, but <laughs> I don't think not, I not clothing wise. Fuck, I don't know. I'm in a real trouble there because I look really stupid in a tracksuit. Mm-hmm. I can't wear suits, mm-hmm. and even even with the even with the the thing, I'm too thin for like turtlenecks. Yeah, you know? I wouldn't be. It's not. I'd be like, oh yeah, I look like Stanley Tucci. Yeah, but I wouldn't. You could just do a shirt and a long coat. That's quite a. Yeah, that's a decent. I about. You know what? A mod. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be class. Why not? Have yeah. You, have you seen uh, Tommy DeVito, the New York New York Giants guy? Danny's brother. Yeah, we all we all tra- <laughs> we all checked. Everyone checked. So a guy a guy a lot of quarterbacks got injured in New York, and uh, T- Tommy DeVito, this guy's name is lives with his mom, young guy from mm-hmm. like you know Italian American, right? <laughs> but his uh, his thing ended up on the side of the pitch. His agent. And I gotta show you what this guy looks like. If you don't sing, it's Tommy DeVito and his agent. That's Tommy DeVito's agent. Good God! It's the most Italian American guy. Jesus Christ! He looks like Lucky Luciano. Like yeah, I can't even. You know, you can zoom in. (laughs) You can't zoom in because you're just gonna be watching on YouTube. Tommy DeVito's agent side side thing. It's got a full on. He looks looks incredible. Looks like like Inspector Gadget. He does look like (laughs) Inspector Gadget. (laughs) Google Gadget touchdown. Right, uh, this week's film, as it's Christmas, the week of Christmas, um, I thought it's my pick, so I would pick, in my view, the greatest Christmas film of all time. Not just the greatest Christmas film of all time, one of my favourite films of all time. This might be... I know we never set out to ever have this podcast being like proper geeky, film nerdy shit. This might be as nerdy as I get because I know a lot about this film. Okay. Um, about the backstory, everything to do with it. Um, it's 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 a one. It's it's it's. That's not easy to say. It is. The film is. It's. It's a wonderful life. Yes. 
And you know what, Ryan? Sometimes I think it is a wonderful life, isn't it? I find the premise completely unrelated, <laughs> unre- <laughs> unrelatable. What? I tell you what, I didn't have a wonderful fucking time watching it. Did you? Oh God! Right, this might be the end of it. Then. So, so I'm delighted that we've managed to come across a film that we completely. I just couldn't be flying fuck with this. <laughs> whatsoever from, from, i remember it when i was a kid and going well this bored me to tears and then i remember <laughs> i remember watching it and i watched it this time and I, I don't give a flying fuck about any of this oh this, this is, is gonna be, be this is gonna be a lot this, of fun this, this is gonna be right down the middle um, because because we actually i just kind of thought about this even when i when i was watching this because i know because you you put a tweet about it and i know it's gonna be a podcast <laughs> and i have this <laughs> Do you not? Do you not find it genuinely found it, life affirming? I like, found it fuck all. I thought he was a wanker. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was a total wanker. George Bailey's a wanker. <laughs> I was on the Potters dude side. <laughs> that Potter dude. Nothing. Even the part where they came out and they were like, "This is Pottersville." You know when he's getting like the whole. I was like, "Fuck yeah. me, Pottersville looks good." Yeah, that is that is a point. Like, <laughs> we'll, we'll, I, I will, I will agree. We'll, with you. we'll, we'll, we'll get, get there. We'll get, we'll get there. If you don't see the film, um, like it basically is a, about a guy called George Bailey. It was played by James Stewart, and it follows him through his life. It starts off with him living in a town called Bedford Falls, where he uh, there's a lot of people praying for him because shit's gone wrong in his life, and he's gonna kill himself, and <laughs> he. Uh, He's, got sent, he's sent a guardian angel, and then you follow him through his life. You see everything he's done for everyone else. You see all the sacrifices he's made, how none of his life, because he's got huge ambitions, none of his life has panned out the way he wanted it that to. That was pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, at the end, and through no fault of his own, he ends up staring down the barrel of absolute financial ruin, potential jail time, and... He realizes because of his life insurance, he'd be worth more value to his family dead than he would be alive. So he goes, tries to commit suicide, but then a guardian angel mm-hmm. is sent down, Clarence, who yeah, not then, one of the good ones. Then has to, <laughs> he's not got his wings yet. <laughs> then he has, so he shows, he's trying, he's trying to convince him not to commit suicide, and then George Bailey basically says, "I wish I'd never been born." So he shows him what life would have been like had he never been born. Hmm. And it lets him see how many lives he's touched, how much he has changed his community, how much he's done for other people, and how much they rely upon him. And then George Bailey realizes that he's actually had a wonderful life after all, and he, d- he wishes to live again. Do you think if he went up to heaven, <laughs> right, after the movie? I'm going to get so fucking angry over this. I, hour. And, they, and they just went, you know, they just went, there's one thing, though, George, you know, we, we did that whole look back in your life thing or what would happen thing. Yeah. but and I, I don't you don't know what i'm talking about because of this but also 9-11 wouldn't have happened fuck's sake there's enough there was enough there was enough cogs turned do you, you know, know do you know if we ever get right <laughs> see those wee road sound boards 9-11 we jingles Right, we're gonna get one. Nine eleven. The wee horny guy, and then whenever you mention nine eleven, we're gonna, <laughs> I'm just gonna press. I and mean, it'll be a sound effect of just a, a building a, crashing. It was a massive world event. <laughs> it was. <laughs> you can't equate it to a fucking film in 1945. Oh, is that when this was made? 1945. Fucking hell. Now I will pre- say this as a disclaimer: it would be stupid to say this is a bad film. It's yes. not. Yeah, it would be because it's, it's not. It's just shite. It's, an, it's not shite. <laughs> it's that shite. Not, it's I not shite. But it's not like, lose it's it, like, like, Do you know I walked in this there? This is what it's going to be like when we do Pretty Woman. <laughs> and how much you love that? <laughs> did you know I came in and Cara, you know, loves the Christmas films? She's yeah. all interested. Like, oh, what films today? Christmas film? I go, it's a wonderful life. And she went, fuck's sake. Cara did that, did she? Well, I'll have some fucking words for her when yeah, I get yeah, back yeah. in that house as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. They're just like, oh, God, I mean, just just put on fucking Home Alone, man. We've done Home Alone. I know, but that's what most people say when you're like, why would you choose this? Do you watch Jesus of Nazareth the Easter as well? <laughs> <laughs> or do you just watch Harry Potter like a normal person? <laughs> fucking, we've moved on. <laughs> but it's just a Christmas carol, really, isn't it? No, but it's, it's, not, not, it's nothing like a Christmas carol. Well, you know, instead of it's, a ghost. It's literally nothing like a Christmas carol. A wee ghost comes and shows them what life's well, going to be. Well, first of all, he's not a ghost. He's an angel. Oh, so so you can fine. fucking yeah. stick that up your ass, <laughs> right? <laughs> he's not getting shown. At no point does 
Ebenezer Scrooge. He gets shown uh, shit in the past, right? That doesn't happen in this. It, it, so it would have been good if it was made about Muppets. A Muppets, it's a wonderful life. That you know what? That would be good. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That, that would be, be good. Mm-hmm. It would be good. See what fucking annoys me, right? <laughs> you're of that elk of I people. Know, I know what you're going to say. That, to, it's a black and white film. It's old film. <laughs> we've done a black and white film. Have fucking we not? grip yourself. No, we've not. I don't think we have. <laughs> oh, I shit, we I was about to go, wait a minute. <laughs> I watched Blade in black and white. <laughs> I said, no, what was, no, the Sting wasn't, it the was sting It was done, uh, maybe it was black and white, but they did it up in colour. No, How long it was, sting, no, Sting's only 70. Sting was always in colour, yeah. Oh, well, there you go. You, the can first watch, you can watch this. I no. do watch black and white films. No, you don't. I like no, yeah. you don't. Do you know why? Because you're thick as fuck. Lahane's <laughs> black and white. The Lahane's black and white, yeah. But you would rather it. In, I know you would rather it in color. <laughs> That's so, not true. Yes, it is. That's you not true. You hate. You love the film. Uh, Do you know what I like? Black and white. My you genders. Love, <laughs> You love American History X, apart from the black and white bits. I've seen yeah, you skip forward. fast forward them on. <laughs> what would the film be about, Jim? <laughs> you have no if idea what the fuck's going on. You're like, <laughs> there's, there's not one single pass <laughs> thing in the past. Why is there no explanation for this behaviour at all? No, that's really turned his life around for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I, right. I think, right? I, I, think, I, hate, I hate the way he talks. Why? You, know, he's just you like, hate the way James Stewart, one of the greatest, most charismatic actors of all times, talks. I hate the way you fucking talk. Oh, Jesus, Lucy. I still do this. <laughs> yeah, oh, Jesus, Lucy. You're fucking whiny. What do you want me to do? Stupid. I ain't got no cash. There's nothing I can do. <laughs> he's, not fucking, he's not a fucking gold perspective for Christ. <laughs> oh, bad Jiminy's. <laughs> well, gee, Jenny, oh, I ain't got no cash for you and the kids. <laughs> oh, God damn you, Potter. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got no... I, I wanted to be someone. <laughs> what? You're just no drift in an accent. <laughs> you can't handle the truth. They're just, oh uh, my just doing the God. wrong movie quotes. Um, We're going to need a bigger boat. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right, I, first of all, I propose right. that this, this is the darkest film we have ever done. Oh, yeah, yeah, it is. Because right. uh, I caught myself to it. <laughs> <laughs> not right. No, not right. Okay, right. Because, right. It so is. It is. I was thinking, is. right, because we've done so hereditary. Mm. Pretty dark. Yeah. Battle Royale, pretty dark. I forgot about that, yeah. But this film, right, this film deals with, first of all, there's a kid is killed very, very early on, right? The the oh. the pharmacist's son. <laughs> is that the one that goes under the ice? No, no, he's, oh, he, so he nearly, survives. He, he sur- nearly dies. He survives. That was, right? He I'll nearly dies. I'll get into that in a second, right? right? Um, what is the pharmacist? Oh, the pharmacist's poison. son gets done for a... Uh, yeah, yeah. He, he gets the flu and dies because he's got the telegram. Then there's the beating of a child by a drunk. Uh, yeah. Then there is the, the, the beating of the child by a drunk because he's almost poisoned another child. Yes. Right? There is suicide... There's financial ruin. Yeah. There's capitalism fucking over the normal man. Yeah. Um, there is hints at once in Porterville, someone being driven to prostitution. Yeah. It's a dark, dark fucking I film. Do, I, this. Yes, there was. Yeah. I, I I enjoyed the I the my my favorite part of the film was how good he acted being in financial panic. When everything went really badly wrong, yes. you know, brilliant acting in that. Yes. That was great. To get serious for a second. Yeah. Because we don't always have to bring the funny in this. Yeah. That scene where he's going into financial ruin and he goes home and he's with his family and he's like just basically taken out on them. Yeah. And he like hugs his kid so hard, panicky. That is the best depiction of suicide I've ever seen in a film. Why? Because the kid killed himself? <laughs> Literally can't. <laughs> it is. It's heartbreaking. It is. It is. It's I, I like. I've been in that situation. Yeah, man. yeah. And Did it you, is heartbreaking it, that bit. Dig the claws on the kids. Yes, and the fact that it, it, it's just, it's such a beautiful, beautiful. It it was good. I found I, I, he's, he's, he's a fucking Jimmy Stewart for Christ's sake. He's a fucking. Oh, he's a war hero. You can't take the piss out of James Stewart. He's a war hero. So just before this film was made, he went to. It, what, he what, it was for what, the Germans. It was World War II. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he ran a concentration camp. 
<laughs> Jim Stewart. Hey, um, get them in that little... <laughs> jam more into that little tub there. Well, sure, now turn on them showers. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, we... I got gold teeth coming out of my arse here. Why are we going to wash them if we're going to kill them? <laughs> James, that's not what they do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm click. gonna get out there. I'm gonna run trains. Yeah. I'm gonna deliver people. <laughs> it's Christmas. <laughs> you know the two, three greatest sound in the world: a ship's whistle, <laughs> a train's whistle, <laughs> and a dying Jew. <laughs> Fuck's sake! <laughs> it's gonna cut. Oh, uh, you got yourself caught up there, fella. <laughs> we did caught up in the barbed wire trying to get out. <laughs> But yeah, he became, became, he was like, I think he flew uh, for, I did it, was he? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he, he flew um, for uh, the Americans and like won a shitload of medals and stuff like that. Because he, he didn't want to make this song because he was he came back with like proper PTSD. Ah. He, didn't, he didn't know whether he wanted to be an actor anymore. He didn't know what, what the fuck he wanted to be because he was so messed up with some of the shit that he'd seen yeah. in World War Two. I wonder where he was stationed. Um, I don't know. <laughs> It'd be great. I hope it's someone. Like... Do you know? I, he was probably stationed in Ireland. Oh, has he? Yeah, yeah probably. Good. What did you do during the war again? Uh, we had our own. Just Nazis. help to the Nazis. You, right, you know it, mm, it, it. It is pretty fucking <laughs> a neutral country. But the best thing about at least at least Switzerland had the decency to, to s- hoard gold. <laughs> <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck did the Irish do? You hoarded pedos. Just. Yeah, fucking cowards. We we were already dealing with the English, right? We all we, we were like, we're not, they weren't. We were nineteen de- forties. Of course we were. Now we we were dealing them right up. We're still fucking dealing with the cunts, right? <laughs> I mean, it, it has went off a bit. Like when I was ten years old, it was still blown up shops. Now it's turned to more like, how dare you claim Sears are running? Yeah. <laughs> the levels have dropped, but <laughs> right. When you're neutral, the thing about being neutral, though, during the World War is you have to send a letter to both to say, I'm not getting involved, you do you. Yeah. So that means Ireland did have to send that letter to Hitler and go, yeah, yeah you do you. And I'm yeah. like, that doesn't seem like neutral. That just seems like you're doing like, I go for it, mate. You're like the bisexuals. Yeah. Just can't decide what you're up to. Can't decide. What's, I- those pe- what's, those, what's the new sexual thing where you basically would shag anyone? It doesn't matter. That's not, I don't it doesn't it's matter new. whether they're is it that pansexual. That? Is that what it's called? Yeah. Right. Sapiosexual just means you're a cunt. You know, sapiosexual. Yeah. Do you know sapiosexual? No. Is that's the one I I, I draw the line at. Right. You're only you can you're only attracted to ridiculously intelligent people. All right. I mean, you're just a cunt. What? You're just a cunt. That's terrible. That's that's such an elitist. Cunt. That's horrible. I only I'm only to people of great. I'm like you. You just like hipsters pretend to be funny. Or pretend to be smart. Yeah. I'm like, ugh. Just wank. Sapio. I used so to So if be. there's any sapio sexuals out there, grow up. <laughs> I was, I consider myself pansexual. Do you? Because I only have sex with kitchen waiters. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Fucking pandasexual. We've got a better one. We've got a better one. I'm pansexual. I only have sex with boys that never grow up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Oh, Clip shit. it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Clip it. Yeah. Clip That's it. how you do it, Vittorio. <laughs> uh, the uh, what? Well, right. Um, back so, to the film. Right. First of all, right. Uh, I already was. I right. This is the second film I've watched at least half an hour in the bath. Right. You remember? Remember I told you I did it again because I was uh-huh. nodding him, and I was like, let's, "Oh yeah, let's write." Oh, I watched the Omen in the bath. But how do you do it? Like, so what? Have you got so a, this time, what an I iPad did, or I brought the laptop. This laptop, right? right? And uh, th- this time there was none of the the furniture to hold the laptop up fitted in the bathroom, so I had to bring in right. an iron board, and I set up an iron board down in its lowest setting, and then had. The laptop on the iron board and sat in the bath and watched at least the first half. And like, and you know, as far as at least when they start, when the you know the they had like the stars lightening up when they're yeah. talking, like burr, burr, and I was yeah. like fucking, you know, that whoa, bit. Whoa, 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 we got a Christopher Nolan in here. That bit doesn't look great. It's <laughs> fucking 1945, you prick. <laughs> the uh, <laughs> that, you don't, you've never struck me as a man who takes a bath. 
I haven't. Because you don't look like I you, haven't. You don't look like you walk. I haven't. Do you, not, do you not remember? <laughs> do you not remember what I said in the Omen one? It was like the first bath I had in like Oh eight, yeah, yeah. In like yeah. eight years. This is the second. Wow. It just went, fuck, there's one I in love the a bath. No, uh, yeah. Oh. I mean I mean uh, you know. I enjoyed the two. Right. I agree. The bit with the angels speaking as stars. Okay, yeah. Isn't yeah. I'll great. give them away with that. Special effects. But I'll give do you them know what? That. Right, this film, this film, this film was given an honorary Oscar. Oh fucking hell. It was, it was nominated for five. So it didn't real re- it nominated didn't for a real one. All the big ones. And then it was given it was given a special effects Oscar because they invented a new way to make snow for films. Oh, that's hard. That's cool. I I meant to that. Because before that uh, films would use basically cornflakes painted white, and that's what would be sprinkled from a machine, and it would create the crunch. Very heavy, <laughs> but it was, but it was so. I mean, that like you fucking if you uh, crush cornflakes in your hand, it makes a hell of a noise. Making a ball. Right. So if you've got them, if you've got them all over the shop, yeah, yeah. It would, it would basically what they would do is before that with snow, whenever someone they'd get the crunch with footsteps on it. But then they'd have to go back and completely redo their dialogue in a studio because it was making out. So what they did was they, they came up with this method of uh, water and foam and all this kind of shit and then put it through these big fans and it came as snow. Great. That's good. I enjoy yeah. that. Considering it's 1945 and you hear people having nightmares like Scorsese and stuff and Taxi Driver. Yeah. Trying to make blood look all right. Exactly. Remember, was that Orange Juice or something? Yeah, yeah, In yeah, Taxi yeah. Driver because he was like, I can't get the fucking thing to look. Yeah. <laughs> so in fairness, yeah. Yeah. I'll give him that. Um, and uh, the reason it was even more difficult is they filmed this in the height of summer and it was a heat wave in LA. <laughs> so the bit, the bit where he's running through the, the town in the snow yelling Merry Christmas to everyone was filmed in the middle of July in LA during a heatwave. Great. Like they had the actors had to take a day off after every second day of filming because they were fucking drained. They were like heat exhausted and everything. Wow. And filmmaking, this is also one of the biggest sets ever made. They basically built the town. Oh, I love this. That town has they fuck they've got they've got I think it's some like twelve fully grown oak trees on that set. Not even not 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 prop trees, <laughs> actual fucking trees. That's class. They basically built a town. I, I would tell you about a guy called Shane Brown. He used to be a comedian. Wait, when I was working in RT, I was doing a Republic of Telly, right? Mm-hmm. I was writing for Republic of Telly, and the, I went in, and uh, a guy, Shane Brown. Um, so you know Fair City? No? No. So it's like the Irish uh, Carnation Street. Right, okay. Right, right. So, you know, like a lot of comedians sometimes could do it as well. Like right, Eric, okay. Eric yeah, Lawler's yeah. in it and shit. Right. So, Fair City, uh, they have like a fake street. Right. You know, it's just like a fake centra, fake uh-huh. bar, you know, just for filming, you know, like whatever. So, they've got their fake Coronation Street type of thing, right? Shane Brown once went Ooh, out. That's lovely. Went out and uh, sat for an hour waiting for the bus in the fake street. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what belly! He tried to remember. He, oh, I remember Shane so much. I haven't That's seen him. I haven't seen him in ten years. But he said it took me like an hour. I was just looking around. Going, what the fuck's the bus? And then he went, "What the fuck's the people in the cars?" <laughs> That's incredible. He didn't realize the entire street he was on was fake. And then he go back out. He was man. waiting at a sort of fake bus stop. He was That's sitting unreal. <laughs> it's great. Sorry, I just just want to. That's very funny. <laughs> But yes, I do agree with you that Pottersville does look actually class. Yeah, they showed the flashback to Pottersville and I was like, unbelievable. Well, the basic idea is if, if George had never been born, this guy Potter, who's like the villain, it's lovely, isn't it? Love it. I love Sophie um, The The villain of the film, Potter, who's like this businessman who wants to own the whole town, he's basically owns everything. But do you know what it reminded me of? Yeah. I've seen Back to the Future 2. Oh, where, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Because Biff has Biff, had the yeah. sports almanac and he owns all the Hill Valley. It's very much like that because it's just like yeah, yeah. It's just like a den of debauchery. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's just yeah, like yeah. Everywhere's a casino, or a bar, or a strip. I was club. like, "Fuck it's me!" Like, it's it does look fucking. They really look like, great. Uh, he uh, did uh, turn uh, into a Vegas, but I was like, unbelievable. Aye. You know what is the very first scene? The very first thing that says in the film is like, uh, "Oh, he wasn't sick. He was much worse than that. He was discouraged." And yeah, it's like fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> fuck off sorry you've got fucking type yeah. 2 diabetes and uh, quite, uh, quite a lack of courage <laughs> like fuck off what the fuck are you talking about what did he die of dissolution 
yeah, 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 yeah. Complete disillusionment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a couple of weird things like that. Yeah, and when, I get that, you know, they know. When love. he's, um, when they're, uh, when Clarence has shown George everything that's happened because he's not been alive and he finds out, like, so he's, his ex boss did poison the kid and he went to jail, right? So he's, yeah, he's yeah, now yeah. like a, 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 an out of jail bum, basically. Yes, that's Alcoholic. right. Alcoholic. And then uh, his brother never survived the falling in the lake at the start. Yeah. And subsequently, because his brother grows up to be a, a fighter, a fighter pilot and a hero, he ends up shooting down like three Nazi planes and saving an entire transport of American troops. So they all die. Hmm. The brother's dead because you see his gravestone. Yeah, yeah. The uncle uh, went to a fucking lunatic asylum. Yeah. yeah. And then he asks. Where's my wife? Where's Mary? Yeah, yeah. And then he goes, she's the worst one of all. She never married. <laughs> and like, How is that the worst one of all? What the fuck are you talking about? Oh, she's a spinster. And, and basically that's it. And, and not only that, like, she works in the library. <laughs> the fucking cat lady works in the library. She wears glasses. She wears glasses. <laughs> that's basically it. Well, yeah, she wears glasses now. <laughs> my brother's dead. <laughs> Well, they're drowned. The other chicks. We nearly lost the war. The other chicks getting arrested for basically sucking off sailors <laughs> in a bar. But she's got short eyesight. <laughs> you imagine how bad things would be if you got that done and they looked at me. What do you reckon I would be? You know, what if is, you were never born. If I was never born. And they showed us. And they showed me and they're like, where's Ryan? <laughs> what do you think I would be up to? If you had... <laughs> You're sitting here doing this with war. Oh. T- <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> do you know, uh, speaking of the wee kid that died, how come, I reckon in terms of movie deaths, people going under ice is like top five. I... How many movies have you seen where people die underneath the ice? I mean, I, I'm pretty sure, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it happens once a year in the world. Oh no, I think I think you're, I think this ha- I think it happens quite a lot. Do you know what I would do? What? Right, say if someone went under the ice and you know you're like running over the ice and then they're looking up, mm. I'd pretend I'm underwater too, swimming <laughs> down, going like <laughs> they would com- confuse them before they die. He's like, what is the water up there too? Oh, I don't think that. I don't think it happens where people slip under the ice and then they're like looking up as if it's like a window between them. I want that. I don't think I that don't want. Happens. I don't want hypothermia. That's horrific. I, I think people would people fall in ice. Yeah, water, I don't, that doesn't count. I want drowning then, under the ice, not not die of cold related complications. I think, I, I think I'm getting one of those. I think I'm going to get one of those ice bath things. By the way, you know the wind. You're going to get a Joe Rogan it. <laughs> yeah, I quite fancy it. I reckon it's good for you, yeah. Because I've heard... i tell you why. Yeah, I just do a wee, a wee Atlantic read, dip. I'd read that it's like it, it, it stimulates the same stuff you get off Coke. I heard this, side, but that's a but lot But it's of like all it. day long. That's a lot of shit, though. See if it turns out it's not. You'll have quite the egg on your face. <laughs> See if I come in here. See if I get one. Woo! If I buy one before like, the next, line, before line the up next some episode ice cubes. and I come back in here like fucking... <laughs> Like McConaughey at the start of Wolf of Wall Street. I'm jacked up. I'm like, fucking. <laughs> oh, <laughs> much have you taken? Not a gram. <laughs> this is just me all the time now. That'd be great. <laughs> Lines of ice. Smash up some ice cubes. <laughs> Keep you going. I do think, because I do, I am quite sceptical about it. Because when people go... It's when they say, yeah. Oh, I tell you what. See, see when you get out of the ice, you feel great. And you go, yeah, because you're not in the ice anymore. That's why you feel fucking great. I, I tried to do a bit recently as well about, like, people are... In TikTok, it's always like, oh, the, you know, the best form of... The best type of drugs exercise. And you're just like, don't fucking say that. No, it's not. It's not the best. I mean, people are drugs. sucking each other off Although, in the have streets. You, have <laughs> you never had... <laughs> <laughs> Any kettlebells? Have you never had that? that high when you exercise yes i've had it very rarely but i remember it distinctly being in a gym once the one time i went (laughs) and uh, being on a treadmill and suddenly just going woof suddenly i feel fucking great it is good it's just a a whole total hassle (laughs) yeah it's all i know it's a total hassle but yes yes definitely absolutely all right the old fucking Peloton that used to be in here. Oh God, aye, of course. Yeah, yeah. that fucking that was great. Aye. I only I only did riding with one dude. <laughs> I know. That's one to one. Well, me, me and me and Alex Toussaint. Could Bye. you could you speak to him? No. 
Oh, so it wasn't like a session, no. It is, I. Uh, but you can't. They can, they you can't speak to them. There isn't a mic. You can't just go. Oh, can I'm fucking see- trying that. <laughs> can they see you? No, no. So it's just a class A login. They're obviously chatting the thing. Ah, right. There's like right, 500, right. 600 people racing oh, at the same right, time. Right. And then Do you race them? You can if you want. If you if you go to the live ones, you just go in. There's like the entire timetable down the side of all 120 people from all over the world where they're from. That's class. And they'll and they'll all run. And you can see. The worst thing is though, it'll be just like F72 absolutely trenching you. And you're like, who the fuck is That's this? That's amazing. Who's this fucking cyborg? Cunt? See the element of competition. It does drive it you. That's it. Anything better. We went on a, uh, me and my pals years ago, went on a stag do in Prague. And there was a, it was a bar. Yeah, that, uh, the <laughs> there was a, generally there was a bar where you sat around very much like this table in front of us, but a tap, a beer tap came up. Yeah. And because it was the Czech Republic, you get like liters, big fucking liters of lager, right? And it was ridiculous. I used As to read the, I used to have a teen about it where... And it was a genuine, true story where the first time I went with my girlfriend at the time, we went in, and the hotel we were in had a bowling alley in the in the lower level, right? So it was a fucking bowling alley. And it was something like the equivalent of, because this was before the, I think this was before Euro, certainly before Czech Republic had Euro. And um, it was something like the equivalent of 19 pence for a litre of strong Czech lager. <laughs> so you're kind of going, this is fucking ridiculous. And then I remember going with her to another bar the next day and it was something like 22 pence and I refused to buy it because I was like, I'm not giving it to this, these rip-off bastards. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but in Fucking this bar, hell. there was a, a, a tap where you, 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 would, you would pour your own, you'd each get a glass from the bar and you'd pay for, so it was basically running on, on a meter almost. Yeah, yeah. So you'd pay for how much you drank. But they were all attached to this scoreboard. Oh my! So say we were table three, Jesus we would Christ. put in our names. We'd put in the country we were from, and then there was a group of English lads on a stag do and another, and it genuinely became like what a what a genius! Ma- it idea. doesn't matter if one of us dies today, we are winning this. We are not leaving until we've beaten those pricks. What a genius! Oh, what a genius! Turning the competition, unbelievable. You know, making thousands off of pure off toxic masculinity. Ab- <laughs> exactly, like, but it, it sucks you in because you go, oh, absolutely, There's absolutely no way I'm getting out drunk by another Aye. table of people. Bunch of cons from Ipswich. Yeah, exactly. Are you, yeah, are you fucking kidding me? Oh God. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Even if I walked in just to see the score in a game, I'd have to join in. <laughs> Give me a table myself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Try to do an entire stack. Is that guy? He's looking at us the whole time. <laughs> I think there's another one you can get on a stag do or a hen do where it's almost like an electric. It's like a a, a vehicle where you sit for each side, and there's a big table, hmm. and then they've got uh, drinks you can pour, and it's it's powered by how much you drink. <laughs> like, essentially, if you want to keep the fucking thing going, you need Jeez. to keep drinking. <laughs> And, it's just like, and they wonder why we've got problems in this country. Stag parties. What's that other one they always do? Midget tossing. Oh, I've never done that. Yeah, when a midget throws you off a wall. <laughs> <laughs> no, midget, midget wang show. Tossing salad. Midget, <laughs> midget salad tossing. I remember. <laughs> what are you doing? You're stuck there. <laughs> Pal's got me midget tossing. How far did you throw him? Throw him? He just wanked me off. <laughs> well, well, you know, Vern Troyer is now dead, so <coughs> I'll tell you how hard. Um, uh, <laughs> I'd love to be able to do the dancing they do in it, you know? Charleston. Like the Charleston is what I was fucking trying to remember for mm. ages. Bastard. I was sitting there going, it's not the can can. No, it's, it's definitely not, not the can can. It's not the can can. I knew it wasn't, but I was like, Charleston. Is Charleston not like where all the racists went mad? That's Charlottesville. That's Charlottesville. That's Pottersville. Yeah. And that's uh, where the Pottersville were out. And... Yeah, listen, I'm not saying this this film hasn't dated. I, yeah, I well, don't, I don't... It, it has because chivalry is alive in it. Yeah. Is it? Well, I suppose it is. Oh, well, may I have but... this dance? Never happened when I was oh, yeah. in rural Ireland in a nightclub. It was more just. Yeah. You felt the group. Yeah, I suppose I they are they are quite they are quite charming, yeah, gentlemen. Yeah. Oh, um, I mean it has it obviously dated. This is nineteen forty five. I don't think the themes have dated. No, they haven't. I think no. essentially because it is, it is it's it's to get like wanky. It is essentially the American dream versus 
the American reality. Yes, yeah. Because it is a it is one man that dreams of making it on his own and making a success for himself, but then being grinded down by the fact that it's only a certain amount of elite people yes, that ever yeah. succeed, and every other working class person works their arse off to make sure that they profit. Yeah, yeah. That's the essential bit of the whole film. I, yeah, I liked the guy Potter by the end. Did you? I thought it was quite funny that he just completely... He's a funny character. Went out of his way completely to destroy this guy's Oh, life. I, I, yeah, yeah. Enjoyed he, he, the fact that there was no redemption. Arc, the fact that it destroys two generations of the same family. Yeah, like, yeah. Because, like... That, that... Well, I was like, oh, that's funny. Yeah. I would have... When the... Uh, Uncle Billy at the end, when he loses the eight grand... Because I don't know, inflation-wise, eight grand in 1945 must have been a good whack of money. Like, do you know? Do you know? I know. I thought. You know where I think? If I was him, I would have looked first of all at all the squirrels and weird birds that he has around. Yeah, they, they probably is. fucking. Did they explain that once? I just, uh, just he's, he's got squirrels hanging about. They might have told, took your fucking eight grand. Do you know what? I didn't even notice the squirrel until this time. It's just like. Because I always knew he had a raven hanging about the office. <laughs> a raven and a squirrel. But then when he's at home, a squirrel just comes up and like yeah. nuzzles into him. Oh, where's the acronym? It was, oh, did one of your fucking hundred hamsters Aye. eat the fucking Aye, thing? Why the fuck are you cutting about like Snow White here? Aye. Like, fanny. Yeah. He is a fanny. I never liked him as a character. Yeah, he's stupid. I would have gone... Stupid. I, I would have gone ape shit at him for yeah. that eight grand. He, he did go ape shit somewhat. I'm glad that he shouted at him and called him a fucking idiot rather Aye. than trying to... Yeah, but then he still takes a fall for him. He, still, he doesn't throw him under the bus because that's what a nice guy he is. Fucking piece of shit. <laughs> that's I, what I like about what I like about the character is he genuinely is. There are some nasty, nasty things he does. Yeah, but when he yells at his kids, it's horrific. Yes, yes, and he is that he is a proper tortured guy, but he still does the right thing all oh, the time. You know when he chats when he starts chatting her up. And mm -hmm. she was like, "Why? What age are you?" And she was like, 18. And oh, she no, goes, "Too young, too old." I, know. I was like, "Too old, I know, 18." I know, I know. That the ageist thing is oh, it's so great. Oh, because he when they're getting they're like, "He's 27." I go, Mo "That motherfucker! He looks like her defense lawyer." So he was he was 37 when he was filming this. Okay, and right. He's supposed to be playing a 21 year old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. I was just like, "Get the um, fuck!" This is this is like when the, when when him and his his brother are getting ready for his the brother's graduation party. <laughs> You do look at them and go, "You're two grown men here. Like, yeah, early, yeah, you're not yeah, even yeah, like yeah, yeah. you're not even like early twenties men. You're two grown ass yeah, yeah. men here." I wonder why, because even up until like, because Greece is one of the worst films for it, where you've got like people playing seventeen year olds who look in their fifties. The next film we're about to do, yes, next episode we'll get to that. But do you think child actors or young actors were just really shite? Is that why you never used them, or was there like rules that you couldn't, or like maybe the young ones were just uh, not as massive, so you had to get the you had to get the big stars for the big movies, and I presume they're just I suppose like, aye. the big ones are all yeah. Like right, Humphrey Humphrey Bogart's going to bang a fifteen year old here. It's just, going to, it's just what's going to happen. Because I can't imagine I can't imagine a film being made now where you'd get and yeah, you wouldn't of... get you wouldn't get like you wouldn't get fucking. Gosling in now to play an eighteen-year-old or no, Bradley, Bradley yeah, that, Cooper yeah, yeah. wouldn't be brought in, but that would be the equivalent. In yeah, this. yeah, 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 yeah. Ryan Gosling and I don't know any young, really young actors. Really young actors? Well, just anyone that DiCaprio was going out with. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah DiCaprio under... essentially lives the life. Yeah, yeah. Of a nineteen forties film. He just doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> he doesn't seem to be. It's been going on for years. You think you'd be like, I'm gonna, I'll toss in one now. He I'll, almost I'll toss in a 40 year old someone age appropriate as they say just just to like what he doesn't he's, it's as if he just goes okay one year less he almost leans into it now yeah it's incredible. i feel like he leans into it now even 40 year old i don't think would be no, what age is appropriate I, well capital reckons in his 50s now mm. he's bound to be in his early 50s mid 50s i would say so even if he did start going out with like a 30 year old yeah, you would, would, be, folk like, would normally go, oh well, at least he's actually now seeing somebody's own age, and you go, no, still not, no, yeah, yeah. still twenty years. Like yeah. it's the camera should be smashing Hill Murn then. <laughs> <laughs> I'd still, I'd still shake him, Hill and Murn. <laughs> I thought he said him. Uh, you still smash what? Where? I don't like Hill Murn. No, maybe not now. 
Oh, well, that's a couple, you know, year, that, couple of years ago. A couple of years ago. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Judy Dench. Fuck, I, I couldn't. Not Judy Dench. Judy Hench. Eh. <laughs> 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 Nah, I couldn't shag Judy Dench. Uh, all right, all right. Cock gobbler. <laughs> That's what they call her in the streets. <laughs> what streets? <laughs> Judy the cock gobbler Dench. <laughs> Outrageous. <laughs> Outrageous to completely. Do you know on the roof, by the way, you know the, the pool in the school when they're dancing in the pool, just the, the floor starts opening and there's a pool underneath and they all start jumping in, right? Uh, can you imagine if some, the guy then... You know, it was like a prank. But if the guy closed the pool again and they all can't get out and everyone just slowly drowns in that pool under on in darkness. No, that would be that put that that school exists. It's a real school. So they were like, We will use a real school, but the rest of the town is fake. Yeah. Well you can't build a you can't build a school with a pool that's no it's already yeah. there. But they didn't apparently they didn't have any towns that look like that. <laughs> I'd love to do you know this is why I there's some there's some places in Christmas films that I would love to spend time. This is one of them, Bedford Falls. I would love to have a drink in the bar in Gremlins. Oh, I haven't seen Gremlins. You've never seen Gremlins? I nearly picked that for this year. That's one of the big ones. Oh, next year, right? It's one of the big ones. Um I always say the two big ones I haven't seen. I've never seen a Gremlins movie and I've never seen the usual suspects. Oh yeah, this disgusts me actually. It's weird, I eh? that'll be a good episode when we do that actually. Because I, I know the twist, but but still. Yeah, he sees dead people. Yeah, he does, <laughs> yeah. The twist is he's a pedo. Bruce Willis is dead. <laughs> <laughs> the twist that, is it's Bruce Willis's head in the box. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce Willis was baby driver all along. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's not even a part of Baby Driver. <laughs> he was the baby driver all along. Uh, <laughs> oh, he's also a dodge. He's also a rapist. Who? The main Bruce dude. Willis. The main dude from Baby Driver. Uh, An Ansel Egghart. No, is he? Yeah, he's done. I've never seen him in anything else. Probably. That's why? because. It's because of that. So him and Spacey in the same yeah, film. Yeah. yeah. Oof. Yeah, and yeah, there was a whole controversy. It was during the Me Too. I don't know what came from it or what was proven or whatever, but he's pretty much done. Oh. It was just got Baby Driver and one and done. Jesus, I think he was in some other dancing shit West Side Story or some crap. But anyway, do you not like? I know. I cause I I tell you when I when I first saw this film because you if you have not, if you've not seen it since you were a kid, yeah. Then did you go to the cinema when it came out? <laughs> <laughs> Paid your rations uh, to get in. The um, because <laughs> I saw this when I was so I did. We both did film studies at university. Well, I did. I did elect electives in it. Electives. In, oh, is that when so you need like, to fill your time and? Yeah, you know you have extra things. Yeah. Like, I'll do something I like. So I did films, yeah. but it wasn't really my. I went to uni to study films. Okay. Um, because I wanted to be a screenwriter, and um, a, I went to Glasgow University do film and TV studies. And when I first went, it was it was amazing because our, our classroom was a cinema. Nice. It was a small cinema at the bottom of Byers Road in Glasgow. Uh, and the first week we did Batman. We did the Tim Burton Batman because the, the, there was different themes to every week. So this was like a kind of popular culture, um, how you market a film. And I was like, this course is going to be fucking incredible. And then the week after that, we did The Birds a Hitchcock film and I was like this is oh my god this is amazing and then another couple of films that were good as well and then uh, we did It's a Wonderful Life the, the course got progressively shiter like I got kicked ours off were, I got kicked off it because it was became so wanky that it I became so boring all that yeah. deep, deep space shit oh, or whatever the fuck it is the film criticism stuff you never actually learn anything yeah yeah but I'd never I'd never seen It's a Wonderful Life and this was the week before we went off for Christmas and just watching, like watching it, it genuinely, properly warmed my heart. There you go. And good. added to how much I love Christmas. Good. And then so I've watched it ever since. So then it's done so a good job. It has done Did a good fuck job. fuck all for me. I know, but you're such a hard character. Do you know, do you... Ryan, you're such a, like, joyless, oh, heathen man. fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I've been called heathen so much. <laughs> 
you know how much of a bad and if, do you know what I I forgot to mention this? Do you know what I played once in the what? Christmas scene? Herod. I played Judas. You played Judas? I played Judas at a Christmas play at school. You know, part of the Christmas story. <laughs> he was when they casted me as him. They just stuck Judas in there. Fuck I didn't have any lines. They were just like, you're Judas at the back. <laughs> Jesus Christ. There are other villains. You could have been the innkeeper that won't give him a room. <laughs> Ooh, booked up. <laughs> have you got the app? <laughs> Booking.com. Do you reckon if you had been more joyful in life, you'd have kept your hair? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that's what happened? Even your hair Joyless was like, cunt. I'm getting off this fucking, <laughs> getting off this miserable dome. <laughs> that's why you're all bald lads really angry. That's there are why... no happy bald people. No, uh, Stanley Tucci. Is he happy? Aye, he might constantly sit there and make, I him, suppose he is make an anchovies and shit in yeah, yeah. I bet he's not actually bald then. I bet he, he's he purposefully shit. bold. Bold. Well, they got football hooligans, neo Nazis. Yep. Angry people. Statham. Moby. Yeah. Not happy how things went after him. No, definitely not. Took his soul. Yeah. Um, Stone Cold. Stone Cold. Yeah. Steve Austin, for those who don't know. Yep. An angry man. <laughs> angry man. Very yeah. angry man. Yeah. Well, he's actually replaced Glass. It's <laughs> <laughs> out of fortune. Now, uh, <laughs> do, you, do you know the, right, do you know the part in the movie where. You know, they're trying to be, it's trying to be like, oh, oh you throw in the stone at the, the old house and they break yeah. it and they're like, oh, you make a wish. And they're like, <laughs> and he was mm. like, what was your wish? And the great if she was like, she's trying to hit, because it's the 40s. Realistically, she was like, she's trying to hit the, the black family that's probably living in. <laughs> Jesus Christ. The black, the black family are squatting there. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Trying to take out one of the kids. Jesus. That's Ryan. what 40s was like. <laughs> I know. So don't don't tell me that's not. I think they depict that. I think. Imagine that. Was you? I wish you would fuck off, you rapey bastard. <laughs> um, do you want to know a story about that scene? Yeah. So uh, Frank Capra, the director, who's he make the the trainers? Uh, <laughs> no, he made the orangey drink. Capra son. <laughs> fuck off. It's not even near Frank Capra. Son. Oh well, it is actually Frank Capra. Um, the uh, cap of fool in that because uh, he he wanted the glass to break, so what he did was it was an actual house they were throwing stones at, and uh, this is very very sexist. But he knew he knew <laughs> we're not sexist. He knew it? James Stewart would would hit the window, right? But he had a stunt man waiting with a a, a a pane of glass that when he gave the nod, she'd throw in the stone because they, they were filming them actually what? throwing it. At the thing, so they were like, ah, she's got no fucking chance of making this, right? So when it looks like the stone should hit the glass, he would he would nod the stunt man and he'd go, Psh, right? And it I would thought you like... were going to say he was going to like run after the stone. No, the <laughs> <laughs> but uh, she nailed it first time, nailed it at the top window because nobody knew she used to be a fast pitcher at high school. Great, yeah, big fan of like women's baseball. Yeah. Who is she? Uh, Donna Reed. Donna Reed. Donna Reed. I know Donna Reed. Do you? <laughs> yeah. It's not her anyway. No, I, I don't imagine it. Benjamin Bolden did. <laughs> but like... <laughs> you know someone called Donna Reed. It's two very Your English age. names. Yeah, Donna is... There's a lot of Donna's around. It's quite but, an old woman's name, yeah, Donna. We used to call her Prima Donna Reed. <laughs> no, we didn't. But <laughs> I will Donna now Reed. if it's here. <laughs> Back in those days when anything went... Like we had a, we had a, a substitute teacher that wore makeup. And that was enough to be called Malibu Barbie for her entire... <laughs> Here comes fucking Malibu Barbie. Just because she put on, like, a tiny bit of mascara. Um, let me see, right? You, oh, yeah, you know when he was circling the bush when she was naked? Being yeah. All weird, being all weird. Oh, here. So he's circling the bush. She's naked inside it. And he's like, oh, what a predicament I've got you in, right? Yeah. Now, a car pulls up. Mm -hmm. Two guys go... Ah, oh, it's your... Who, who's had a heart attack? Your dad or son? Someone's had a stroke. Your dad's dad died. Dad. Your dad's had a stroke. And I was like, I would have first been like, how did you know I was on this street by this bush? In the car? And oh, well, I think... No, I think that what's implied is they've been <laughs> driving around. And if someone probably saw him leave with Mary and went, I know where Mary lives. Aye. He's, good. he's back to get... He's back to get his hole. Yes. All right. Well, what's even funnier then is they pull up. He jumps in the car and he turns out a bush that mm -hmm. they don't know there's anyone in. And he mm -hmm. goes, goodbye, Mary. 
I just leaves all the other and then they know. drive off and they must have been like I think he's having a stroke too there's no woman there <laughs> they, they had no idea there was a woman that's in the true. bush that's very true actually. goodbye like, Murray yeah <laughs> Great. Like, oh. this thing's contagious yeah yeah he's oh no he's already he knows he's already had a fucking nap <laughs> the uh you see the scene where they um because that's quite a powerful scene as well I can't believe you don't like the acting in this is phenomenal the, uh, no no I right? like I like see the, the bit acting where good, yeah He's clearly, he's so pissed off at life, right? Because his brother keeps landing on his feet. His brother goes off because he he can't leave. Because the dad has a stroke, he then has to take over the family business or else it will go to Potter. So then he's saved up money to go to college. He ends up giving the money to the brother who goes to the college. The, co- the brother becomes a fucking uh, Ivy League football star at the college, then comes back married and then getting straight in with a job with the, the chick's husband, with the chick's dad, sorry. And then he's kind of sitting about going, this is fucking, how, when am I going to get a break here? Yeah, yeah. And then he walks over to Mary's house, and then there's the other dudes. Uh, he's the only guy I don't like in that fucking film. That kind of keeps going hee-haw, that prick. Um, he's there, and he's made a millions. He's, he's like yeah. in the plastic industry, and he's made millions. And then the two of them are standing there, and... George just grabs her and starts shaking her. He's like, listen, I don't want the fucking plastic industry. I don't want to be a businessman. I don't want to get married. No way then. And then he just starts fucking getting off with her. And then, but like fucking like it's really it's almost violent the yeah. way they do it. Yeah, yeah. But that was so in that scene they had to uh they had to remove because, him. because he was he'd never done a he'd never done a a, a kissing scene <laughs> at all in any film. Right, so he was really, really nervous about it. So Capra was just like, just let it run, just let it run. So the two of them got so into it, right, that they just started fucking snogging the arse off each other, like proper getting in it to the point where they had to cut bits out because the censor wasn't going to give it like a U or PG rating. Just like pushing, were like, pushing her head, down. <laughs> basically fingering her. Like, I don't want that fucking plastics. I don't. Give it. <laughs> Grabbing her by the head. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Spitting in her mouth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who's a <the> dirty bitch? <laughs> We're not going to be able to use this, uh, James. <laughs> Cut. Uh, James. Oh. How about you lasso my cock? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. You just ruined this film. This is what feel people feel with the whole Malone thing. Yeah, you fucking. Do I, what do you want? What do you want, Mary? You want my cock? <laughs> I don't fucking die. I'll get you. I'll last it back. I'll last it down. I'll last it down. Oh, lost Christ, it in Bangkok. Horrible. Nah, that that scene was shite. Oh God. I last it in for you. Like, no, it wasn't. Isn't lovely. Yeah, what the fuck are you talking about? Like when he tries to get her out. Remember when he tries to chat her. Tries to ask her out, and he's uh-huh. like, "Oh, oh, and you know, I like the feel of the grass between my toes." And then he looks up, I and there's about the entire, I, I and then the entire, up. and then the entire turn. He, t- he looks up, and the entire towns around him going, Bleh. "Yeah, but it's the forties. <laughs> what they had nothing else to do." That's listen. If we, if we are, if we are to forgive certain things that happened in the forties and fifties, then we have to forgive. You're anything. trying to forgive Hitler. No. Is that 30s. what you're saying? It's the 30s. <laughs> he, he did his best work he in did, the 30s. He did it. Uh, um, do you know, like, uh, yeah, that, that stuff about... Yeah, when he starts fucking freaking out about, about all this stuff and starts... Oh, do you know what? You know when... He, <laughs> you know when he's like... It's not when he's... Is it his honeymoon? The night of his honeymoon when mm. everything goes to fuck and he's in her, he's in that the shacked up house... Mm. Uh, that she's all organised and then his two mates just like singing outside the window for him. Yeah. That's fucking funny. It's also lovely. How is that lovely? Because of course it is. Uh, do you, do you, if you were trying to do that with Amy and me and Wall were outside singing Who Let the Dogs Out? <laughs> <laughs> woo! Woo! It's like, turn on the radio. They had fucking radios. No, but that she's... That was her wish when she hit the window. That she'd get that old house. She's dressed no, I up get that. In all the posters, that he, the places he wanted to go. She's made a nice meal. She's, to be fair to her, 
that thing she does where she's cooking the two chickens at the fire. Oh, yeah. And she's hooked up around the record player so that they keep spinning yeah, yeah, yeah. on like a spit. Yeah. That's, that's genius. Yeah. That's... Put on a Prodigy record, it'll go quicker. <laughs> that's not how records what work. What the fuck are you... <laughs> if, it's a, if it's hardcore, the, the thing get, spins quicker. Get Mixed Master Mike in. <laughs> <laughs> Mixed Master. <laughs> yeah, but have fun, boy. Don't you stop. Um, but uh, before we go, uh, the, 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 there are a couple of things that I don't. One thing that always, because uh, I think the ending scene is incredible. They would die of and legionnaires, by the way, in that house. A lot of people would die. Okay, can I do that? A lot of people do die in this. What? What? what, what Very what? dark. Oh my god! Oh fuck me! The funniest. I was in tears when that dude went off the bridge. You know, the, the, was it the, was it Clarence? Clarence where he throws himself. Ah, in the, yeah. the way he falls, man. Yeah. Oh fuck me! I was yeah. like, I felt like Jack Nicholson in Departed. <laughs> he felt funny. He just went, Whoa, yeah. and he made a help. Yeah. The, the roaring in forties films is so funny. Yeah. Do you know he's abusing the kid, and she's trying to play the piano. Yeah. Oh, daddy. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. Oh, daddy. Those ki- those kids. Why don't you love me? Cause you got a pussy yeah. love. I wanted a son. <laughs> <laughs> the kids look older. She looks a bit fifty-two as well. Ah, uh, she's a proper jellyhead. Uh, see that? <laughs> see at the start when um, he he doesn't deliver the medicine to the kids because he knows he's put the poison in it. Oh yeah. So the old dude that plays Gower, the pharmacist, he was actually pissed in that scene, right? He was just f- fucked up, and he. So George, because he saved his brother from the ice, has he's deaf in one ear. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um. So. When Gower's like reprimanding him, and he slap, he fucking slaps him in the side of the head, and his ear starts bleeding. Oh, aye. right. I always thought that was because oh, he's, that's his ears that he's done. Fucking the guy hit the kid in real life, like he fucking <laughs> leathered the kid. That's real blood. He basically burst the kid's eardrum. <laughs> what the fuck? I'm like how bad? How the man? fuck? Like. They're and like, then, is that even the actor? We ha- the guy, the guy comes out of that. <laughs> the guy comes out of his dressing. What the fuck's going on? <laughs> hey, who the fuck's that? <laughs> James Stewart comes out. That's my dad. <laughs> Get him out of here. It's not even the right kid. How many levels? He's just leather on the kid. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy's like, we got it on tape though. It looks pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> it looks pretty good. He has drawn blood. Um, but the the ending scene. Because I watched this with Isla, my wee girl, and because I was like, you don't need to watch it. Because she kept asking me, what's your favourite Christmas film? And I was like, it's a wonderful life. She was like, what's that about? And I was like, right, okay, uh, here's where I describe suicide. Uh, yeah. And um, we uh, we sat and watched it, and then she didn't watch it to what, all the end, all towards the end, because I could tell, right, that there is a lot, there's a lot of stuff about banking in this film yeah, that yeah. I forget about. Um, and then she didn't, she came through right at the end of it and because of the last scene i was in floods of tears like fucking, <laughs> i cry every single time I what, when, this what, when they come in with all the money yes it's it's lovely all right it's nice because it everyone, is nice everyone I comes do. in with the money and everyone goes oh the you know this is how much he is he basically without him there is no community there is no bed yeah, for no, falls no. the town goes to shit he without the him, nobody has a house. Without him, nobody really has a family. Without him, soldiers don't. And then when everyone comes back in, and the guy wires twenty five grand, and then even the even the yeah, even yeah. the guy that are there to pick him up to take him to jail are handing money in, and then the bell yeah, rings. I like that. That was nice. Clarence yes. gets his wings, and then he opens up Tom Sawyer, and there's a wee inscription from him. And it, when, he went, when he went, was when it Mark Tom, Twain? Mark Twain, yeah. Tom Sawyer was a book by Mark Twain. Ah, I have, I have my I have my opinions on Mark Twain. Oh, I say yeah. Well, because like he 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 wrote a quote saying, "You'll never enjoy your life if you don't take the risks that you want to do," and that was just before he wrote the N word two hundred <laughs> times in Huckleberry Finn. And I know that that's, I know that they're related. Those two things are together. <laughs> Oh, I have a ruined Mark Twain for you. Now. I'm never bringing a nice film again. No, it was right, right. But there, look, 
Right. <laughs> First of all, I have a couple of wee things here that the, I had. I was going to say about that scene is the only thing that ruins that scene for me because it properly warms my heart. Uh, as a as a as a person who's normally miserable all the time, it properly more. But then what ruins it for me is how bad James Stewart's singing is when they're singing "Old Lang Syne." Oh yeah, he's he's like that classic. And I now I notice that any time I've got any time I'm at a religious wedding or a funeral or something, or even when we go to like the kids' shows and this, do you know when they do Christmas carols? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's only then you realise how shite how difficult it is to actually sing those songs because you don't know what to pitch it at do you know when you're like away in a manger I know. and you because you don't want to you don't want to come across like a cunt and go like proper like bass like oh uh, you don't want to go like that but then if you go too high then you start losing your voice and then it's awful it's like um alan partridge do you ever see when he tries to go on the karaoke and he tries to go, why do birds suddenly appear? Oh, yeah. <laughs> why do birds? Yes. And he's like, oh, you get the point. <laughs> <laughs> Too high. He's trying to get the key right. He's trying to get the key right. That is exactly close it. Close to you. That's exactly it. Well, uh, you, get the, you get the idea. Our friend, <laughs> uh, Barry Castagnola, used to have an amazing routine about going to see Kenny Rogers at Glastonbury. Oh, great. And really? singing Islands in the Stream. And he's like, the thing about it is, start a lot lower than you think you would, because you really start to lose the. <laughs> is he basically like, ever since I met you, it was peace on earth. I feel not to meet you. <laughs> it's great. It's so funny, Barry. Can you imagine at the end if he had to kill himself, mm -hmm. and the town didn't know, and the town turned up with all the money? Oh, God, that would have been... Oh, my God. <laughs> That's what I saw. What a funeral, though. <laughs> oh. Go, he's, he's gone. Do you think he'd ask for it back? He fuck left. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Oh, he's dead. Oh, Jesus. And they're all putting, God almighty, they're all putting yeah. money on the thing. They're like, I know you probably need the money now that he's dead. Yeah, but... but it was for him. Yeah. Like, you've largely you, done you could, fuck off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You'd have fuck off for bed for false. Your kids yeah. certainly haven't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> ugly. <laughs> May I add? Ugly children. That's very funny. That's what I, you know, yeah, fucking hell. Do you know, big, do you know like, he's like, uh, you know, he's running down the street too and he's like, oh, this, 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 this shop and this shop. Merry so, Christmas, you old building and law. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But if you did it like nowadays, it's all these weird buildings. Yeah. Oh, Foot Locker. Yeah. Just, just oh, a, the Scientology office. Just, a, just a shitload of necks. <laughs> I, I tried to do a joke. Merry about Christmas, you old tan and go. <laughs> <laughs> I said it was a terrible idea to call a shop next. You may as well call it just fuck off. <laughs> Isn't it, though? Such a stupid. Uh, next. Uh, gosh. Oh, and then well, you, you've you know, this, but you've made me laugh. Let me see. Um, imagine if they did that. I reckon if they did that to me, mm. the guardian angel. Mm -hmm. First of all, I don't have a guardian angel mm -hmm. because I had a load of placebos once, so he probably overdosed. <laughs> <laughs> right. Second of all, <laughs> it's so stupid. Uh, but if your guardian angel was English, right, he might not want to help me. <laughs> You, never know. you get, but no, but you're assuming that English people hate you as much as they as you hate them, okay, and I don't think true. that is the case. So it I, might I, be in your case, it might be, but but you like you got to be like listen, Ryan. Anyway, like if we make it there, I think if you, he if he went like Ryan, we've given you three, we, we've given you ten people over your your angel lifetime. We haven't given you the wings because most of them have died, but the people that have died that you were supposed to protect were English. Yeah. Uh, if my guardian angel was English, I reckon, that's like what I was saying the last time, if I got a transplant and the heart was an English person, oh, would yeah. I petrol would bomb you? myself? Yeah. <laughs> so it's that type of thing. I'd know something's up. <laughs> it would be terrible if your guardian angel, if, yeah, if like if I'd... If the town thrived... See, that's the thing. If, if they showed you it, they'd actually... If he goes, oh my God, this is actually... Like, <laughs> yeah. if, if I tried it, if... And, uh, I don't know I what you did, and but then... racism would never have existed yeah. if you oh. were <laughs> You're like, what did I do? Imagine. <laughs> you cut off a guy. He thought it was a it's black like guy. like that, that butterfly effect thing. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. Hadn't, if you hadn't been born 9-11, never happened. But, because yeah. in some way you had some... Yeah, yeah. 
Like if I get taken back and suddenly Amy was like getting railed <laughs> by some fucking gorgeous black dude <laughs> just like living the life like absolutely. Yeah, one of those names. There's no taking Oh, Jules Valentine. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, what am I supposed to do here? By the way, first of all, the angel as well decided to do all this while the guy was hammered. Not, yeah. a, not an ideal time to do all this. Second of all, how fucking stupid is James Stewart? I forget his character's name, James Stewart, right? How fucking stupid is that? It takes him, like, how does he not recognize after, like, example six? He's like, what's happening? Where's my kids? No, and I the know. angel's like, I have explained this to you five times. These people, ain't, you don't exist. I know he's trying to do, like, the... You know, I don't believe you. you. Nah, yeah, that would mess you up. Uh, yeah, but I mean, like, after episode, what What do you mean my wife's not here? He goes, the same thing as the other five things <laughs> yeah, 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 I yeah, just yeah. showed you. The same thing. Can you not get this now? Yeah. I understand that you're probably having somewhat of an episode and you're hammered. Terrible yeah. time for me to do this. But, you know, fuck Clarence is what I'm saying. <laughs> Clarence is a piece of fucking shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just... That'd be class, though. It'd be class, I if you were suddenly coming back with your wife, yeah. But if he came back, I and like his wife has been completely real by the mm. the local jazz band. Daughter in the corner playing the piano in tears. What? You gotta bring me black, Clarence. Black? <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, a last fact I'm gonna give you about this. Um, do you know why this film became so successful? Uh, because there was nothing else going on. Mm, well, you know, there far was off. a world war. <laughs> <Not far off. laughs> um, so this film uh, was written originally as a short story, and I could see that the guy it was called the Greatest Gift, and the guy was trying to give it to because this this stage you couldn't really get short stories published; they would normally be sold to something like the New Yorker or okay, something right. like that. They couldn't get it published anywhere. So he eventually went, fuck this, I really like this. So he sent it out as a Christmas card yeah, to uh, 200 of his friends. So rather than a Christmas card this, this that year, they got their card, but they also got their short story with it. And they went, have a read of this. This ended up, one of them was his agent. His agent ended up showing it to a producer. The producer then bought this idea, loved it. Then it was made. F- massively flopped when it came out. And <laughs> hugely, hugely. Well, they, they it, it I didn't think that. cost a lot of money to make this film. Yeah, I'd say so. I'd say so. It'd look because great. of the set and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. uh, massively, houses, massively yeah. flopped. No one knows why. Critically, did all right. Nominated for the Oscars. Then, the studio that owned it. So with copyright, you need to renew copyright every um, 16 years or something like that. Due to an admin error, whoever owned it at the time, whatever studio, didn't renew the copyright. So suddenly, from like seventy till about in the mid nineties, it was it was in the public domain. So TV companies in America, just CBS, cheap. NBC, would go, "This thing's free." So we'd lit- we'd play this every single Christmas. I mean, they'd have it on like three times a week, nice because it was free. Nice, and yeah. that was when the public went, "This is fucking class." And then it developed this huge, that, uh, huge following. And that's how it became such a huge film. Do you reckon that's why, like, is Harry Potter not? And that's why ITV play it all 24 7? <laughs> or Bad Girls Sp- on Channel Speed, 5? <laughs> Speed 2. <laughs> Speed 2. Cruise Control. <laughs> Cruise Control. <laughs> Somebody's forgotten to renew the rights to Speed 2. Cruise Control. <laughs> we're, pl- we're showing it again <laughs> every night until you fucking watch it. <laughs> Do you know that I have two parts now that I, I have to bring up just before we go, right? Yes. Number one, the cunt that was complaining about the damage to a tree. Yeah. What a wank. Yes. My granddad grew this tree, yeah. and I'm like, well, what, I, I, I'd, be able, I'd get it if maybe yeah. his granddad was buried under yeah. it, and they're doing that roots thing. Yeah. Yeah, fucking. It's one of the oldest trees in Pottersville. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> probably probably it's hanged. Like, you mean Bedford Falls? <laughs> no, I mean Pottersville. Don't you think I know where I live? You're drunk. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> uh, if they hang, they probably hang some dudes off it, right? <laughs> Stop with the fucking. They hanged a couple of dudes <laughs> off it. Do you reckon then, like, because you're buried underneath it, would you be trialed for manslaughter in the racism, afterlife? What do you think racism was in 40s America? 
the worst. <laughs> it was it was bad, but not in all. This is this is clearly fairly upstate. This is Alabama. This is North America. <laughs> this, this is, is Al- that's all. Alabama right there. I know Alabama. When and I also, say it. even in Alabama, I'm fairly certain there wasn't just racial attacks happening <laughs> yeah. in every neighborhood twenty four seven. I like, thought it was. I thought it was like doing the weekly shot. <laughs> Go out and see something. Go out and see a lynching. <laughs> I mean, it's bad at, at the moment in America, so I presume it was worse in the fall. Yeah. Um, my, but one American thing that I found very much knew that it was in America, and my last thing that I have to complain about is the fact when he punches the policeman, mm-hmm. the policeman just starts opening fire. He does, yeah, he does. <laughs> in the street. Even think, yeah. <laughs> Two women come out of the shop. <laughs> Two women hit the deck. <laughs> with like a wings. <laughs> Winged in a <laughs> full fucking belt of cop. Oh, yeah. trigger happy belt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> didn't pay your, didn't pay your fucking tax. The, um, <laughs> Last thing I'll say is this film has one of the biggest pieces of shit in it of any character, right? And he's a very, very minor character. The guy's called Tom. I don't even think you find out his second name. When uh, the banks, when there's a run in the bank, which I never really understood what that there, meant. Neither did I. I was, tr- I was trying to figure that out. But I think, I think basically what happened, remember in Iceland where all the banks during the financial crash, I think it's basically the bank goes out of business and people literally quite literally don't make trust a the... run on the bank because they need to get their money out before the bank forecloses and the, before the bank basically because sh- as soon as the bank shuts its doors that money's gone so any money you had in there is fucked yeah because nowadays it's what it's like insured kind of yeah but not really they don't really but in those days it would probably actually be physical money as well yeah yeah be. yeah so um when that's happening, and then George Bailey uses all the money he was going to use in his honeymoon, which is two grand, to pay people. Some, so hon- that they... some honeymoon he was going to go Exactly. Because Potter is, is going to buy all their shares and all their trusts, but he's only going to give them half the money for it. And yeah. Some people are going, well, half's better than none. And then George yeah. goes, right, listen, we'll run this out. We'll ride it out. We'll use, listen, we've got two grand here. How much do you need to tide yourself over? Right, and most people are going twenty dollars. Twenty dollars will do me for the next seventeen fifty. I can kiss you. I can kiss you, Susie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's a good story about that scene as well. Uh, that was improvised. She was supposed to say seventeen dollars, and good. then Capra said to her, "Say something made up." And then because Stuart wasn't expecting it, so his reaction is completely ah oh, nice, completely Enjoy uh, realistic. The good fucking first guy that comes in that starts demanding his money. <laughs> he's got, I've got $252 in this bank $252 in this building's on loan and he goes yeah yeah but it's not like give me my money now and he's like no but your money isn't here your money's tied up in that guy's house and his money's tied up in that guy's house that's how a building and loan works that's how it works in a loan kind of thing and then when he does go right he'll give you your money how much How much do you want to tide you over and he goes I have $252 <laughs> and he's like no but how much do you need right now yeah. I want 200 and... you fucking piece of shit we like, fucked this for everyone wank stain yeah yeah I reckon there's, there would be some people leaving there that wouldn't have got any money because he demanded all of his Yes, that's that's what I was saying. I was like, you're the first person. You're now fucking this for everyone. Yeah, yeah. And then, he, and then even even then he goes, consider that my account closed. And then James Stewart goes, no, no, that's a loan. Yeah, and yeah. Like, even then, just smack the guy. Set Aye. the raven on him. I said the... Squirrel, <laughs> Uncle Billy, just two squirrels. <laughs> a whole forest of animals appear. A fucking jungle cat Fuck. comes out of a drawer. Fucking Doctor Doolittle over here. <laughs> <laughs> Said the cut song. Oh god. Right. Well, that wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. I thought I would. I. I. I didn't think I'd get through that. I thought you'd slag it a lot more. But, no. Um, it, it, no. I, I, no. I think it's wrong to say it's a bad film. Yeah. I think that's just wrong. I'm, I mean, I'm about to fucking throw rocks to Cara and Daniels when he was after. I, don't, I didn't say it. I don't even think they would say it's a bad film. No. Just I will never watch it again. It, do you know what? I, I, like well, I, I, can't like I said at the start, the reason you don't like it and the reason Danny and Cara don't like it is you are all stupid. You think You're it's all because... thick as fuck. No, yeah. And I, you're, not, I will... you're not you're not cultured enough, you're not intelligent enough to appreciate black and white films. Me and Daniel with anything with anything that's not in your face. When I said to Daniel before we did this, 
what Daniel said was, ah, oh, fuck off. It, I knew, I, he I, goes, I he said, <laughs> and I will quote him on this. He said, I'm not impressed by fire anymore. <laughs> <laughs> now me and Cara me and Cara are like really bad so she's looking for she was angry only because it's a really well known film she was angry we did Home Alone she wants us to do the ones that me and Cara have watched like Christmas Breakup right, with yeah. Donny Glo- Danny Glover and Denise right. Richards really right. bad shit. and I go we'll get there aye we will you know we'll get there she was just like why Home Alone and I go what do you mean why Home Alone aye you know so we're on that type of level see I, I like ah uh, Sloss is the worst for it. Well, Sloss, Sloss is the worst horror film. Sloss is the worst for this generational idea of anything that wasn't done in the last five years is just shite. Yeah. And it annoys me because there then will be something he'll find and then he'll go, oh, uh, uh, but not this, not this thing. Yeah, he, Kai he, does it as well. He has, Fucking Kai used to go on about how older shit was... And then he, I got a message from Kai say because he'd started watching classic films and he goes, "That was me that got him into this." I, and he's like, J- "See, to be honest, I, I, I've got to apologise because these are all fucking class." See, see, Kai, Kai came over and we were and when Kai was over here, this was must have been like two years ago. Kai, Kai started mentioning these films. I made Kai watch. I mean, I made Kai watch Heat. I made Kai mm. watch True Romance. We watched The Godfather he's never yeah. seen. We watched Taxi Driver. I watched all of them with him because he was like, I've never seen these films. And I go, well, Jesus Christ, man. I, you, you get proper into The Godfather. And it's but you're doing yourself at this service. I was like, yeah. Not watching yeah, I, I made him watch them. He loved all of them. He loved True Romance. He's my favorite film. But but fucking like, Sloss does it, wait. It's, well, it's like, even, I, I like, even, I like even, a lot of the same stuff. It's not even just films he does it with, though. We, he does, we he does like it with, the He same. does it with music. He does it with fucking video games. It's like nah. right, it's right. Like, eh. Why, why would I, why would I watch that when things are so much better now? And you're like, I will things agree with so you. So much better now. Music, he's got. I've never met met anyone in my life with a worse music taste than no. Sloss. No, it, it isn't. It, 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 his his car. If you go on, it says Daniel's playlist. Oh on God! And it is like five Ed Sheeran songs in a row. Oh, Jesus. Then it's two Warren Zevon randomly, like America, like two, he loves Warren Zevon. Sloss likes Warren Zevon? Mental. Out of nowhere. So it's just like, Ed like Sheeran. Werewolf of London. Yeah, Warren Werewolf Zevon. of, like, thing and then two Warren, v- Warren Zevon songs and then it's, it, then it's like Lumineers. <laughs> It's Lumineers. Lumineers. It's, it's Lumineers. Hey, what's that? Hey. Anything with, hey. A ma- <laughs> anything with a fucking mandolin. Mumford and Sons. A mandolin. Oh, and then it's like, you know those shit Scottish oh bands that are like, they're like poppy Highland music. They get like, the, the way I describe it is Daniel's playlist is hopeful, hopeful road trip with 18 year old girls. Yes. Yeah, I, yeah. Suicide. The kind of, it's the worst music taste the kind of ever. Music, the kind of music a group of girls would play in a car before they go and get murdered in a cabin aye, somewhere on a horror aye. film. Uh, no, I, I used to call him 13 Reasons Why. Oh, I, okay. the Lumineers. What a beautiful... He's Lumineer uh, fan. Are they the folk that go, Hey, hey uh, Hopeful, slightly oh my fucking... God. You, you know, my favourite Onion article. You ever hear the Onion? And this is a Christmas one. My favorite ever article about the Onion was uh, uh, Mumford and Sons buy each other mandolin for Christmas again. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! And he has the gall. He's sitting there with a playlist with the Lumineers on it. Lumineers. And he has the gall to slag off and then this and film. Do you know? Do you know it's even worse? When one song he likes Eminem. But it wouldn't even be good Eminem, right? It'd be like Aye. rap god. Right? Aye. Yeah, yeah. So that will come on, and you can tell him going like, <laughs> "You got a badass over here." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Lumineers, Mumford and Son, Ed Sheeran. Oh. I, the, people like the uh, like like you know those kind of like Callum Beatty type of dudes yeah. and stuff like that. But the only he likes them because like Gareth, yeah. his friends him and all that. Uh, no, he he does like the songs and all that. But that type of Along the yeah 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 yeah, so he's got the worst music wise definitely. And that, this is your hero. And, and uh, I but but movie wise we we love like I kept going to him. We we both think the longest yard, the Adam Sandler one, is like one of the best films of all time. Well, let's do that one day. Uh, well, oh, well, oh wow, well, well. Hmm. 
Oh, I will. It is 10 out of 10, you know? <laughs> nah, uh, uh, brawl and cell block 9. Right? Oh, yeah, well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I all like any of that. Yeah, one yeah. of them, a masterpiece. Well, Merry um, fucking Christmas. We have another one to do. Speaking about, speaking of 10 out of 10, wait till you see the next film we do. Woohoo, baby. The next film, can I just say, I have not been more excited to do an episode than the next one. Yeah. Film because this is an all-timer. And we're, 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 we're getting loose now as well i'm getting loosey and goosey uh, yeah inside uh, me are two wolves so what are we doing pretend to be goose in the next episode we are doing schindler's <laughs> 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 no, no. we are doing uh what what i would describe as britain in a little little jar of cum that is a very very good description it's a little it. it's britain in a little packaged into a little hallmark that is very thing. good it is love actually mm. the uh who the fuck direct? Who gives a Richard fuck? Richard Curtis. Richard Curtis. Yeah. He yes. does a lot of shit films. He does. He does films that an Irish person. Oh uh, yeah, that I'm gonna. Richard, look, I'm Richard gonna, Curtis. I, would, like I bet Richard. Word. Yeah, Richard Curtis watches yeah. The Crown. The next, the next episode might be our first ever two-hour-long or over. Yeah. Because there's a lot to say about this film. Yeah, I even showed you stuff before this. Yeah. Oh God, yeah. Yeah. So we'll see you then. Um, yeah, thank you very much. I hope I hope you non-heathens out there enjoy It's a Wonderful Life. It is a beautiful, beautiful film, and it will make you feel better about yourself and about life. So, yeah. or, and, or don't. Yeah. Just watch. Just watch, you know. I, and next Saturday night. <laughs> is that still going? Uh, I think so, yeah. Yeah. Um, Merry Christmas, everyone. Thank you very, very much for uh, joining us over the past... Six odd months we've been doing this. Has so it? Far. Yeah. Um, so next... what? This is like twenty. This will be like episode 26, 27? Yeah. So Something around yeah. that. Yeah. So thank you very much. Uh, we hope you have a lovely, lovely, lovely Christmas. Um, we hope you take care of yourselves. We hope Santa is very good to all of you. And we will see you in the Gooch week. Yes. Or the Twixtmas. The, <laughs> the ball. Right after St. Stephen's Day. The, the chin rest. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. In between uh, the Christmas labia. and the New Year. No, no, it's not just uh, straight up the labia. <laughs> <laughs> the labia of Christmas. So, yes, a uh, happy Christmas from both of us, Absolute Cuts, and we'll see you next week. Cheers. <laughs>